We are the Peaky Blinders, and together we're about to change history. I think the secret to Peaky Blinders global success is a really unique capturing of uh, an era, the 1920s, post First World War, that until now has been very American. I think also for me it's the characters. I think they're so rounded, they're so lovable and they're so deep and you know you fall in love with these characters for over six series also for me and i have to say this the design is fantastic you know it's kind of created its own um genre of design almost because it's not particularly accurate because it's peaky blinders accurate and so it has a style in itself so not only have we been able to kind of take the 1920s um uh, kind of era but also the peaky blinders era as well if that makes sense Peaky Blinders The Rise um, is set within season two of the Shelby journey. We have taken uh, out Billy Kimber, so we now run the Northern race courses, and Tommy is now ambitious, he wants more, and he has his sights set on London. So our show is the fight for London. So we have the Sabinis, we have the Solomons, and now in London, the Shelbys. So our story will take place over one night, and it's our audience to decide who will win, the Shelbys, Solomons, or Sabinis. The audience should feel like they have stepped into an episode of Peaky Blinders. We're going to have a lot of audience that, that love this show, so they should feel like they've stepped right into, right into an episode and they have genuine agency as to the ending of our show. So we are rehearsing three different endings and depending on what the audience do within the night, what they choose to do with the money, that will affect the outcome of the show. There will be those here to corrupt you, turn you against us. Just now, we'll be watching. Uh, I'm really excited to play Tommy Shelby because uh, the character that we love from the TV show is so iconically played by Killian Murphy and the, and the source material there is uh, second to none. Um, but the job of translating that from screen to stage, particularly to immersive stage. I think it's a really exciting one. Uh, Killian's voice is incredibly low in the TV show. Um, and so just the job of what that means to bring it up, to bring it louder, and, and also to work with an audience who are coming with uh, ideas and offers and, you know, will, you know, throw curveballs, whether they're inadvertent or deliberate. So Polly Gray is, um, she's a feminist to start with. Um, I'm excited to be portraying her because she is um, a force to be reckoned with. Um, Helen McCrory, um, the late great Helen McCrory played her on screen and um, I'm really excited to have a real essence of what Helen created on screen and, and put that into what I'm trying to create on stage. Yeah, these characters are so rich. Obviously, Paul Anderson, who plays uh, Arthur in the TV show, I, I want to give the audience, you know, enough of a hook into the character that they love, but also to to really tap into that the shell shock of this man that's come back from World War One. I. I mean, Aunt Paul talks about Arthur being born with shell shock. This is a, a really disturbed character. For me to take on this role is is a big challenge, but it's really really exciting. There will be violence, there will be laughter, there will be magic, there will be madness, there will be money, lost and gain, and there might even be death. But my friends, that part is down to you. So the TV show and everybody who's been creating the TV show of the years have been incredibly supportive. So we actually got to go to their stores in Manchester and visit some of the original sets. I got to see uh, the garrison from the later series. I got to see Tommy Shelby's office. And um, that we've actually been able to take certain items from, from their stores and use them in our show. So the audience will actually be able to walk into the original safe that was in the town uh, house office, uh, in, the, in the townhouse and also there's loads of props and bits of costume that if you look really, really careful, carefully, are uh, original from the TV show. Love us all, hate us. We'll be here. Waiting for you. 
ready to take London. Yeah, the audience can come have a great time. You can dance on a table with Arthur Shelby. You can have a business meeting with, with Tommy, or you can sit and talk politics with Ada. You know, there's, there's something for everything within this world. We are making a show for lots of different types of audience members. Uh, and so I think those who want to experience the sets and the costumes and the characters that they recognize from the TV show. If you're not a fan of immersive theatre, you just love Peaky Blinders, there's something for you here. Um, if you're a fan of immersive theatre, I think the gameplay that we're building here is some of the most complicated and intricate that I've ever seen in immersive theatre. It's like Disneyland for adults, yeah? Yeah. It should feel like... With the, integrity. The, with integrity. Disneyland with integrity, you, you that's that, a really yeah. good way yeah. of putting it. You know, sometimes when you're in Disneyland, you want to go and speak to the characters and get the autographs. You've got those people, yeah. but you've also got the ones that just like to stand back and watch the fireworks It's like a from twisted afar. Disneyland. Yes, a twisted, like a twisted Disneyland. Disneyland. Yeah. So dress to impress, put on your flat caps and come have fun. It's going to be a wild, wicked party. That much, I guarantee. I watched it and then it was a bit violent and I didn't, and, and I think if you can get past the, you get a bit numb to it all after a while. Once right. you've seen a couple of people have their faces smashed in with an ashtray, yeah. you're like numb to it. <laughs> you'll, yeah, you'll be all right. Just have a themed cocktail, it'll be all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Yeah, there's a, a bare knuckle boxing fight that happens. Um, Polly won't be boxing. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never seen it. <laughs> I only started watching it after I got Did the gig. You? Yeah. <laughs>